Hi, and welcome to the Return Homestead. Today we are making and canning carrot cake jam. So I'm going to be making two recipes, but I'll give you the rundown on one. I'm going to use Pomona's pectin, which is a low sugar pectin. I'm going to be using calcium water, which helps it to gel. But instead of using sugar, I'm going to be using monk fruit with allulose. It's a one to one ratio with sugar. So if it calls for one cup of sugar, you use one cup of the allulose monk fruit. For one recipe, it asks for one and a half cups of grated carrots. Now I harvested these this fall. I put them in one and a half cup increments and I threw them in the freezer until I was ready to do this jam. We got a fairly decent harvest. It wasn't huge, but I didn't plant but two rows. One and a half a cup of chopped apple, which I have here. You want to peel and core those, of course. One and three fourths cup pineapple with the juice, and I'm using crushed. You can add the juice of an orange. I'm going to leave that out. Then you're going to use one teaspoon of cinnamon, one half teaspoon nutmeg, one quarter teaspoon of cloves. Then each recipe gets four teaspoons of the calcium water. Now, if you watch the Christmas jam recipe, I had extra calcium water. I make it up and keep it in the fridge. You just want to shake it up real good before you use it. So I have my calcium water. And then you're going to use four teaspoons of the Pomona's pectin. This is Pomona's, it's low sugar, like I said, and it comes in a small package, and you're gonna reserve part of the two cups of sugar, which is next. You're gonna use four teaspoons of the calcium water. You're gonna have two cups of sugar. I'm using the monk fruit allulose blend, so I'm not using actual sugar. The monk fruit allulose, uh, doesn't affect your body in the same way that sugar does and we're trying to do without that and then you're going to have four teaspoons of the pectin now you're going to want to reserve part of your sugar mixture which i have here and you're going to mix your pectin into this before you put it in the pan if you put it in the pan without mixing it into your sweetener or sugar mixture first it will clump and this helps it to not do that. So the first thing we want to do is put your fruit in a pan. So I have my measured out carrots, which I'll add to the pan right now. And you're going to use one and a half cups of chopped apples. I've got these sitting in a bowl with water and a little lemon juice to keep them from turning brown. And I'm making two recipes. Next, you want your one and three quarter cup pineapple crushed with the juice. Then this goes on the stove. It'll come up to a boil and you'll simmer it for 20 minutes. So I ended up having enough apples to make three batches. So I went ahead and jumped it up to a three. And I've got my fruit on the stove coming up to a simmer. And I'm going to go ahead and add my spices. That's your cinnamon, nutmeg. Uh, you can put a pinch of ginger in it if you want, and cloves. So I've pulled out part of my sugar mixture, and this is what the pectin is going to go into. And this needs four teaspoons per recipe. And this can be saved for later and this gets stirred together. 
Now I've got all my fruit in the pan. I'm going to cover this and bring it up to a full boil and it will simmer for 20 minutes. Now that my fruit and spices have simmered for 20 minutes, I'm going to add the calcium water. And each recipe gets four teaspoons. Now I'm going to add most of the sugar and get that stirred in. Holding back my pectin sugar uh, mixture. And I'm going to bring this up to a boil. Now that we're at a full boil, I'm going to add my sugar pectin mi mixture and stir it very quickly. And it will get this for one minute, making sure that the sugar and the pectin has all dissolved. If you want your apples to be smaller, obviously go ahead and uh, chop them smaller. And then it's totally optional, but I am going to be adding unsweetened coconut, a quarter cup or half a cup per recipe, and a quarter cup of walnuts per recipe. And that goes in right at the end. If you want those, it's not necessary. And I cook it an additional minute before jarring it up. I have my canner coming up to heat right now. This is starting to get thick now. I'm going to go ahead and remove this from the heat so it doesn't continue to cook. I'm going to start loading the uh, jam into pipe jars. I'm going to leave a quarter inch head space. Or thereabout. Then you're going to want to take a paper towel or cloth moistened with vinegar. Make sure there's no food on the rim. Fingertip tighten. And these are going to get loaded into your canner. The canner is up to a full rolling boil now. We'll process this for 10 minutes plus one additional minute for every thousand feet you are above sea level. For me, it'll be 11 minutes. Again, the recipe calls for one and a half cups of grated carrots, one and a half cups of chopped peeled apple, one and three quarter cup of crushed pineapple with the juice, you can add the juice of an orange. I did not in this recipe. One teaspoon of cinnamon, a half teaspoon of nutmeg, a quarter teaspoon of cloves ground, and a pinch of ginger if you want. Now I did add a quarter cup of unsweetened coconut right at the end of this recipe. It's optional. And a half a cup of chopped walnuts at the end of this recipe, also optional. I thought it would be fun to put it in with the Christmas jam. It would make a great guest or hostess gift. If you have a last minute person you need to get something to, this is a great way to do it. Um, especially if they're not somebody that does their own canning, they might appreciate it. Plus it's festive. I ended up with seven pints of the carrot cake jam and a half a pint. 
I tripled the recipe and that's the best part about Pomona's. You can triple or double a recipe. It won't affect your jam or jelly. You just need to be able to process it all at the same time. And I was able to do that. This recipe you can make with cane sugar. I did not put cane sugar in this. I used a monk fruit allulose blend. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. For every cup of sugar that the recipe calls for, you would use one cup of monk fruit allulose blend. If you use pure allulose, it is only 75% as sweet as sugar. Although in this recipe, that's probably enough. This tastes extremely sweet to me. We really don't want to add the sugar to the diet. I hope you enjoyed this recipe and thank you for coming along with me today. The best way you can help our channel is to subscribe and give us a thumbs up while you're in there. Until next time, bye-bye.